Hey everyone, this is Julie at Brinker Family Farm. Just want to give you a little update. I did change the name. So if you're looking to share anything that you find on here, it is no longer Brinker Family Flower. It is Brinker Family Farm. I was doing more videos and thought that kind of fit a little bit more to true to what we're doing. What I'm showing in the videos is farm life and not just flowers. So I want to give you that quick update. Now on to we got new chicks. If you've seen the last episode, I showed you our four new baby chicks. They are Colombian Wyandots, and they're going to be white with some black on them. And we also got some meat birds, some Cornish crosses. We have 27 right now, so we'll see how many, because you always end up losing a few. Um, but these are going to be our trial run. We want to see how much it's going to cost to raise them per chicken because we're hoping in the future to um, raise and sell them. So here are our baby chicks. We just moved them outside. They're not gonna be out real long because it's windy and chilly today, but I wanted to do a little touch up in their bedding. And so I thought they could be outside for a little bit and then we're gonna put them back in. Here they are. gave me this um, little, I guess you call it cute, and they weren't using it anymore, so I thought this would be perfect to contain them while I was doing a little maintenance, and as they get bigger, we'll be able to have them outside and be contained and not have to worry about a predator issue. Now, all these little white ones here are going to be our meat birds, and then if you see any little ones picked, there's one here, and there's about three in the back, back over here. We, those are the laying hens that we got. Um, I went ahead and got four new laying hens because when our older girls turn a year in August, then they're going to go through a molt in the fall. And at that time, their bodies are starting to get ready for winter. So they're not going to be laying eggs. They're going to be storing up extra body weight and getting the new feathers going to help them be ready to go through the winter months. So these will be a about six months, they'll be that'll get us to end of October, beginning of November, and that'll be getting them into eggs, so that our family's not without eggs throughout the whole winter. We got this really big crate from my husband's work. They didn't need it anymore. And it's been working out really good to, for this amount of chickens. It's given them plenty of room. And we'll just put their light in over here. And we will be set again. Alright, so we got our beehive kit behind me 
from Tractor Supply. And with COVID, there was a few pieces missing, but no big deal. The company had already put a note in there saying that these pieces were gonna be missing. And so just to contact them. And as soon as they come in, they will let us know. Look at these chickens, by the way. They had to come see what I was doing. So before I go on about the beehive anymore, I want to tell you a little bit about these chickens. I went ahead and ordered them last year from Myers Hatchery up in Polk, Ohio. And I got, um, I had 15 hens, one died, and one rooster. Good. I went and got a mixed group of them. I, got, I tried to get about two of each kind, each variety. My rooster, and then I have two hens. One is the one that's on the left over here that goes with him. She's a Delaware, like the rooster. And then the other one that's beside her is, no, I don't know. Um, she is either an Easter Egger or a Queen Egger. I see some black and white ones. Those are Wyandots. Those two right there that just stood up. They're a Wyandot, silver lace Wyandot. And then there's a few other ones. There's some leghorns and some Sussex. I think that's how you say it. And um, then there's, there's a black one that I'm not 100% certain what she is because I had got like a, five that were random just because I wanted to see what we'd end up with. But the nice thing about having the chickens down here scratching around is they're going to be keeping the bugs at bay that are down here by our beehive so that if there's, any, if there's any dead bees, they'll clean them up. Or if there's any bugs that could be harmful to our honeybees, they'll be down here scratching at the ground and trying to clean them up. Nice thing, they can coexist pretty nicely with each other. Now, you can occasionally get a son that'll be a little bit over aggressive, but um, for our family, we're gonna, if, they, if we notice anything's over aggressive, they're gonna be gone and we'll bring in something new. Now back to what I was saying about this box. Anyhow, so we got our box from Tractor Supply and we set it up, but it was missing a piece that we weren't anticipating it to be missing. So we are going to be putting that in and this just has primer on it and I'm going to paint it. But our pear trees did not bloom as well this year. I don't know if it's just an off, a mix of it being an off year for them. And we had a lot of like frost and real warm days and then dip real down low so my parents some of them are looking like they're gonna be okay a lot of it I'm not sure of especially since the one tree this one the pear tree that is on the right didn't really bloom a whole lot the one on the left did pretty decent so we'll see what we get um they were really good pears they were as big as my hand what we were hoping by setting this out here was we were gonna be able to catch a swarm I don't think we're actually going to this year so I'm trying to look and see if I can still get um, a nuke set which is a queen with her worker bees um, there's a few places in our area that do honey bee um, supplies and I'm trying to get in contact with them to see what we can come up with so it'll be a journey and I'll be sharing it with you last thing I'm gonna show you is what's going on in my front bed flower garden. It's more than a flower garden. I am growing some vegetables and that's turning out pretty handy. So here, let's go up and see what they're looking like. All right guys, so here we go. This is my front bed flower garden that is also serving as a spring plant uh, nursery, I guess I'll call it. I've got some lettuce grown. It was just a mix that I had. I got a little bit closer than I meant my radishes but it's coming get, I'm gonna be able to harvest some get a little bit of salad out of it these are radishes and they're looking pretty good I've never had radishes actually grow this big so for me I'm pretty excited about this so I'm excited about these radishes they're coming along I've been kind of snacking a little bit pulling them out so that the other ones have more room to grow Look at this butter crunch lettuce. Look, I planted it, forgetting how close these were. So it's coming along, but I can't believe how nice this is coming back here. And these are some more radishes back behind my lilies. Um, there's another butter, another butter crunch. I might have to move it, but we'll see. Here in the next week or so. Look at all these carrot babies. 
They are looking good. I'm going to come through and thin them out because there are some sections that are really too close to each other. And I also have some, I have some flowers coming up over here. And these, I believe, oh, they're kind of have you had? a radish. Mm. You want it? You going to take a bite? Do you want to have a bite? There you go. Dirt and all. Pretty good? Yeah. Good. I have some calendula because I had it grown here last year and it's reseeded. And I noticed that was a calendula today. And um, I'll be excited to have this because this year I'm actually going to be saving the flowers to. Is this a yeah, radish? No, nope, that's not a radish. Can you show me what the radish Yep, is? in just one second I'll show you. I'm going to use my calendula this year um, for some saps. Alright, here's a radish. See the rest in mm -hmm. there? down on the end. Can you find something that looks like it? The leaves look the same? Yep, those are the radishes. Where? Right here. This is a whole row of them. Lots of radishes. Radish. Oh, those ones were little. We'll probably see if we can put them back in the ground and see. Hold on, don't, don't grab no more. We'll I'll help you find one. This okay. big one. Yeah. It's it was, a mommy. It, that's a mommy one. Alright. I guess I should tell you that these things that are shooting up all over this back row are got olias. I planted them when we got here. We just were two years ago that we moved in and they've multiplied a lot. Now there is also some onions growing in between, but that's a, another story for another day. And they've multiplied and they these are the white variety. I'm trying to decide if I should dig them up and move them or if I'm trying to leave them. I haven't decided yet. But they are very pretty. Pretty and showy. So that's what's growing. These tall things so long back here in between. These are orange, like an orangey yellow lily. And, and this is the rose that I've had for a few years also. And it's real pretty with an orangey pink color. And um, it changes the more it opens, and I've really enjoyed it. I probably need to find a better spot for it, but I do like having it right in the corner. It did get a little bit of frost damage because we did have frost again, but I think overall the plant's still pretty healthy and it'll do all right. All right, well, that'll wrap it up for today. I hope that you enjoyed seeing our baby chicks and our big chickens and seeing what's going on with the bees, and we'll be sharing more as we do more with them. The kids and I are going to go plant some peas that are a sugar daddy snap ones that are supposed to um, be a little bit more heat tolerant and um, we're going to call it an evening. Until next time, bye now.